Strong, sexy, and foxy, Pam Greer, also known as the queen of blaxploitation, starred in over a dozen films between 1971 and 1975. She performed all of her own stunts, all while handling a weapon, a car, a plane, and her enemies with ease. She was praised for her beauty and sex appeal, and everyone from actors to comedians to athletes were chasing her down. Despite being seen as one of the most beautiful actresses in the industry, Pam's love life has been a roller coaster. We don't have time to discuss every single relationship she has been in, but we'll be shedding some light on some of her messiest and most significant romances. At the age of six, Pamela Greer went through a traumatic experience at the hands of her cousin and his friends. According to the New York Post, the incident turned her into an introvert. She developed a stutter and was afraid to be around people. She kept the incident to herself because she knew it would destroy her family. She added, I decided to stay quiet and see how long I can go and how much stronger I can be with this energy inside me. Her grandparents' Wyoming farm became her sanctuary. She learned how to ride horses, which would come in handy later in life, and her stutter eventually disappeared. Pam enrolled at Denver's Metropolitan State College with dreams of becoming a doctor. At the age of 18, she went on a date, and things took a turn for the worse when he brutally took advantage of her. The incident made her retreat even further into her shell. In her memoir, she wrote that she began dressing down and intentionally tried to make herself look less beautiful so she would no longer be a target. She kept the incident to herself for a while and tried to process the painful memories on her own. Once she got to the point where she was feeling more confident, she decided to open up to her new boyfriend. His response was, wow, you're tainted. He soon became her ex-boyfriend. Next, she met Wilt Chamberlain. Yes, the basketball player who claimed to have slept with over 20,000 women. Pam told The Undefeated things never progressed because she was too country and Wilt was attracted to women who were more sophisticated and educated. She told the Washington Post that she competed in a beauty pageant to earn money for medical school. A casting agent was in the audience and told her she should consider becoming an actress. Pam laughed at first, but after he told her the market for black actresses was opening up, she decided to pack up and move to Los Angeles. She got comfortable in her new city and caught another basketball player's attention. This time, the guy was a 7 foot 2 inches tall UCLA graduate and NBA player, Ferdinand Louis Alcindor Jr. They bonded over their love for martial arts and eventually fell in love. She had finally found someone who understood and respected her, or so she thought. Ferdinand converted to Islam and changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He made it clear that he wanted to marry her and assured her she wouldn't have to convert to Islam. But slowly, things began to change. He told her, I can only marry a woman of the same religion. In her memoir, she said she started studying Islam and was horrified by its attitude toward women. When she asked Kareem why women had to walk behind men, he would simply say, because that's what Allah wants. On her birthday, Kareem called her and said, if you don't commit to me today, I'm getting married at two this afternoon. She's a converted Muslim and she's been prepared for me. It was an easy decision for Pam. She turned him down and wished him luck. Kareem got married to a woman named Janice Brown, who later changed her name to Habiba Abdul-Jabbar. They had three children and got divorced after seven years of marriage. Pam began taking acting more seriously, but she was considered an unconventional beauty by Hollywood's standards. She told the New York Times she has chipped teeth and a scar on her knee from a bullet she was struck by at the age of 17. Standing at 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighing 145 pounds at the start of her career, the Washington Post described her as being chunky. And because of her height, no one wanted to cast her as a leading lady because she was taller than most of the actors in the industry. 
but she persevered and won the lead role in the 1971 film The Big Doll House. While the movie was a success, her romantic relationships continued on a downward spiral. She had uneventful flings with Soul Train host Don Cornelius and Led Zeppelin lead singer Robert Plant. The next time she really fell for someone was in 1973 when she was promoting her new film, Coffee. So you want to play with knives, huh? She met Freddie Prince, one of the hottest new comics in town, and they clicked right away. She considered becoming his wife, but there was an obstacle standing in their way. Pam said, Coke was becoming a daily thing for Freddie and the rest of his friends, but I couldn't accept it. Pam said he would purposely show up without condoms and eventually confessed to her, I'm trying to get you pregnant. I love you, and I'm afraid you may not marry me. Things between them weren't always bad, though. Pam told Madame Noir website it was Freddie who encouraged her to pursue a career on Broadway. He wanted her to be a star and wasn't intimidated by her success at all. But his issues became too much for her to handle. She broke things off and they remained friends. Freddie eventually moved on with a woman named Kathy Cochran and they had a child together named Freddie Prince Jr. It was Freddie who introduced Pam to Richard Pryor. The three of them hung out at Richard's house, but after realizing they were going to start partying and doing coke, Pam asked Freddie to take her home. She began to distance herself from Freddie as he fell further into his addiction. She landed iconic roles in Foxy Brown and continued to build up her acting resume. One night, she received a call from Freddie, who was staying at a hotel, and his voice was full of sadness. He told her he had lost everything and his entourage had sucked up his entire fortune. He was depressed and felt like he had no one. The only thing he had was a weapon. Pam told Madame Noir she was nervous about going to see him at the hotel because she was afraid he would take both of their lives. She said, I take care of my family. I'm paying a lot of mortgages, putting people through college. I've been given a purpose and I can't have him take my life. Days later, on January 29, 1977, she received the devastating call that Freddie had taken his own life. He was only 22 years old. Pam and Richard Pryor linked up again when they began filming the movie Greased Lightning. They struck up a friendship and eventually began dating. Pam soon realized she was in yet another relationship with someone who was deep into substances. But she wasn't going to let go. She helped Richard face his fears, created a health regimen for him, taught him how to read, and helped him kick his substance habit. But after six months of sobriety, Richard went back to his old ways, and their relationship became rocky. Pam claims that during a routine doctor visit, her physician told her he found a buildup of cocaine residue inside of her. The doctor told her it was a dangerous epidemic that had been going on around Hollywood, and it was presumed that Richard was using the substance on his privates to last longer in the bedroom. They broke up in 1977. In his memoir, Richard wrote that he was the star, but he was turned off by how much Pam believed she was the bigger celebrity. He added, in my head, there was only one numero uno, and it wasn't her. Not long after going their separate ways, Richard married a woman named Deborah McGuire. He told Vanity Fair he was drunk during the nuptials. Deborah showed up an hour late and had to be revived after taking too many quaaludes. And Pam showed up to the wedding uninvited. The years passed by and Pam appeared in small roles in TV series like Roots and The Love Boat. And then she received a call from Sidney Poitier, letting her know that her ex-boyfriend Richard was high and delaying the filming of the movie Stir Crazy. Sidney asked Pam to rush out there to talk some sense into her ex. So she paid Richard a visit and walked in on him freebasing cocaine. She was able to talk to him and convinced him to go back to the Stir Crazy set. She thought everything was fine, but then she received another call that Richard had poured 151-proof rum on himself and had set himself on fire. 
He was taken to a local hospital where he was treated for severe burns on more than 50% of his body. Looking back on her past significant relationships, Pam knew it was time to refocus. She said, I couldn't change Richard. I couldn't change Freddie or Kareem. And I realized it's not about changing other people. It's about changing myself. She told The Guardian she became a health nut and was running six miles a day. She wasn't eating any meat or abusing her body in any way and eventually started a new relationship. She went in for a routine pap smear in 1988 and was given the most terrifying news. She had stage 4 cervical cancer and only had 18 months to live. Not only was she fighting for her life, but she felt completely alone. Her boyfriend didn't show up to her first chemotherapy session. He promised to go to her second one, but Pam said he didn't show up to that one either. She added, he just abandoned me, and I didn't see him for another five years. She told the New York Times she was able to prove her doctors wrong by beating cancer and was given a clean bill of health in 1990. In the mid-90s, she relocated to Denver to be closer to her family. She began dating RCA Records executive Kevin Evans in 1996, but their relationship fell apart a few years later. While speaking to the LA Times, Pam described herself as a loner, which might explain why she hasn't gotten married. She said she prides herself on being self-reliant. And aside from an alleged eight-year relationship with a marketing exec named Peter Hempel that ended in 2008, we haven't heard much about her dating life in recent years. In a 2019 interview with the Denver Post, she revealed she was single. And during an ABC interview that same year, she said she was living in a rural city in Colorado. She was keeping herself busy on her ranch and was living by her grandfather's mantra, if you wake up breathing, you're going to have a good day. Let us know if you're shocked by Pam Greer's dating life. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.